We have one eligible personality, Wing Commander Ravi, with us, who has flown multiple aircrafts, including military aircrafts, and here he has uh, obliged to give certain answers to the countless number of questions we have with this unfortunate incident. Thank you so much for speaking to us, sir. Uh, give us a small briefing about yourself, sir. I'm a retired Wing Commander from Indian Air Force, and uh, I have been in Indian Air Force for 20 years, and during my career, I have flown uh, military aircraft mainly like uh, Hawker Siddeley 748, then Antonov 32 Russian and then Illusion 76. Uh, I have close to about 5000 hours of flying in my career of uh, last 20 years. Then I, I was with uh, you know, Blue Dot Aviation uh, Cargo Airline as a safety manager. Uh, and now I am doing uh, the training for the pilots, the cabin crew, the ground operations and then uh, heading the aviation training wing here in the global school of uh, aviation which is part of the you know brand of global flight landing services so it's an honor talking to you uh, thank you so much and uh, so the the first and foremost doubt we have the people generally have is said what is a jet aircraft why do we call it as a jet aircraft yeah jet aircrafts uh, generally fly with the jet engines uh, basically uh, these engines uh, take the air in and then the compress the uh, fuel is mixed with the uh, ignition and then the compressed air gas goes through the turbine and then pushes it through the nozzle uh, thus creating a thrust with which uh, it's able to fly basically it is the newton's third law of motion which equal is applied and yeah equal and each and every action has an equal and opposite reaction that is the law is applied to propel this uh, jet engine aircraft yes sir but once it takes off so like mm -hmm. unfortunately what happened with ai 170 is that the incident occurred within seconds of it take off and you have an aircraft over here or a, a model of it and uh, what exactly happens when a pilot is actually uh, decided to take off? What is the role of a flap in an aircraft? Yeah, if you see uh, the main, uh, this is a jet engine and then these are the wings. And since you spoke about the flaps, uh, normally uh, the aircraft needs to produce the lift enough to get airborne from a runway. Uh, the wings have certain capacity to produce the lift and then they work based on how much is the airflow which is uh, flying over the wing, flowing over the wing. So. When at slow speeds we want to take off, uh, we need to augment the lift which is produced, which needs to overcome the weight of an aircraft. So the flap is called a, you know, a lift augmentation device. Basically, this increases the surface area of the wing. We would have seen the flaps come out of the wing at the back and, and the total wing area increases. See, as per the basic Bernoulli's theorem, uh, lift is a function of, uh, there is a lift coefficient and uh, density of air, air speed and the surface area of a wing. So, when other factors are uh, constant, what we do during takeoff is, since I want the aircraft to get airborne at, in a shorter distances and we increase the surface area of a wing by which we are increasing the lift. Hence, the aircraft is able to get airborne using a shorter runway. So, higher the flap setting, higher is the surface area, greater is the lift and lesser is the runway requirement. And when it comes to Dreamliner, another yeah. question that was put forward on the social media is that, where exactly is the fuel stored? Yeah, fuels are stored uh, in the wings, we call the wing tanks, as well as we have a center tank on the top. Uh, so, both the wings will have fuel and we also have the center tank in which also the fuel is consumed. And we have an automatic fuel feed system through which the sequence of fuel is decided and they are fed uh, to the engines, both the engines uh, simultaneously. Also going to ask you and that was about the black box. The box is orange, but we are still calling it as a black box. What is the function of a black box? Yeah, uh, typically a uh, black box is, uh, has uh, two, par two parts in it. One is uh, DFDR which is called the Digital Flight Data Recorder and the another is called a CVR which is a Cockpit Voice Recorder. Where is it stored? Yeah, so the Digital Flight Data Recorder is uh, kept uh, somewhere here. There are uh, main and standby also. Certain aircraft has uh, uh, one of the box which is getting recorded in the front also. In But mainly in many aircraft it is in the tail section because after impact uh, the tail portion survives a lot uh, yeah, mainly. So it is decided to keep uh, by design the black box, so called black box in the tails. Uh, the digital flight data recorder records various parameters of uh, aeroplane like its speed, height, engine parameters, fuel figures and various other aspects. Whereas a cockpit voice recorder records the communication in the cockpit, communication from cockpit to the air traffic controller and also the communication from cockpit to the cabin with the cabin crew also. So, all the communication which takes place in an aircraft uh, are recorded and then preserved in this. So, when we download it and then we are able to work backward or nowadays we do have animation softwares which are able to reproduce the actual construction of the uh, flight from the digital data 
and then we can simulate what went wrong and how the aircraft behaved and uh, why the accident uh, took place. So these are certain technological advancements which are available and mainly they use the data in DFDR, the so called black box. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.